Eric Darling here with Eric Darling Data, and if anyone would like to buy some antibacterial wipes, uh, I have many available. Uh, I don't have any different colors or sizes, but I have I have many of them available. Uh, anyway, uh, I wanted to talk <coughs> about uh, SP underscore human events because uh, it's a stored procedure I've been working on to try and humanize extended events for people because I think a lot of the 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 trouble and hurdle that people run into with extended events is just being completely lost with what to do with them. So uh, there are other videos in this series that kind of walk through things a little bit more uh, in depth, but I just want to introduce to you some new stuff. And the new stuff is uh, logging the event data to tables. Now, uh, this feature is complete in that the data gets logged to tables, but it is just the raw data right now. Uh, my next step in the process will be creating views that will um, hit the raw data and, uh, <coughs> what do you call it, uh, produce output that looks like what the store procedure does. Now, there are a few things that drive this process, a few new parameters that drive this process. Uh, that, well, this one isn't new. This one I had in there from before, but it's it's functional now. <laughs> so, uh, it's called Keep Alive, and if you, uh, I'll, I'll walk through exactly what it does. But Keep Alive basically tells uh, the store procedure to create the event session and then bail out, so we don't go collect data from it. Uh, we don't turn it off and kill it like we do normally uh, if we just gather like a, a quick sampling of data. Uh, the next one is custom name. So if you want to tack some custom nameage onto your event session name, you can do that. Uh, this only works with keep alive equals one. This does not work for regular sessions. Uh, and the next two things are, well, the next well the next two things for outputting are output database name and output schema name. There's no output table name uh, because there is a pattern that I put into the table name so that I can locate them later and do things with them. You can of course do some customization to the table name here, but it gets tacked on to the end. Uh, it's basically if you wanted to have like two sessions with different filters that were looking at something. Uh, so there's database name and schema name, and then they have this um, delete retention. Uh, so I wanted to not have <laughs> this data piling up in tables in a database forever and ever. Uh, I capped it low at three days. By default, you can change this. I guess, you know, just out of uh, a, a phrase that's very common in the news these days, out of an abundance of caution. An abundance of caution, caution, caution. Uh, I have it at three days right now. Uh, you can, of course, change this if you are feeling crazy or if you create sessions that do not collect much data and you want to keep it more long term. That's totally fine. That's up to you. But, you know, me being paranoid about <laughs> something like, oh, you filled up my drive. I'm suing you. And I'm going to be like, it's an MIT license. Get out of here. Uh, <laughs> can't sue me. Uh, anyway. That's why I did that. So let's go through a few of these things here. Now, uh, the, the help section is updated so that uh, all, there is descriptions of all this stuff. It views the, uh, the help, help parameter. Uh, moving on down a little bit, uh, here is, well, no, no, we know what that is. Uh, so uh, I missed it. Oh, I keep missing it. Oh, I'm having such a bad day. Oh, it's a terrible day. It's a terrible day and my mouse barely works. So um, <laughs> anyway, so this is where custom name kicks in. Um, so the root of the events where uh, we keep them alive is under keeper underscore and then human events. Uh, just two different naming patterns so that I don't find stuff when I go and look for dormant or orphan sessions up here. Uh, and then custom name will get tacked on after some stuff there. Uh, and let's see, scrolling on down, where are some other interesting stuff? Uh, we do, I, I did add checking in to make sure that there's like some semblance of sanity to the, uh, very, the new parameters that we can pass in here. Like I'll validate the database and I'll validate the schema and you know, damn it, man. <laughs> It should be a whole lot easier to validate uh, that a schema exists than that. Uh, and then I also make sure that the custom name doesn't have any weird special characters in it because um, just the way it gets set up, I, I can't use quote name in the way that I'd want to. Um, so I do have to check that there's uh, no special characters and that it does not start with a number. Anyway, uh, let's get down to where things start getting more interesting for you as an end user where things start happening for logging to tables. And it's after all this. So the reason, so I, I wanna, wanna point out actually while I'm scrolling through this stuff that the reason I didn't uh, follow the path of inserting the data into 
the logging tables fully formed like this is because I would have had to turn all of this stuff into dynamic SQL. And at various points, there are, you know, multiple temp tables involved. There are some, you know, extra parameters. And it just, it was, it was starting to look very, very complicated. So I opted to just turn the root XML shredding into dynamic SQL, which was a pain in the butt enough creating the, getting the tables created and <laughs> getting that turned into dynamic SQL um, because some of these do have some conditional logic in them. Uh, so that, that was, that was, it was just, it would have been too much to do that. Uh, so I opted to just put the raw data in and we'll deal with the raw data by uh, creating some reporting views later. Now, here's where the fun stuff starts. So um, if we, oh, dude, I lost well, my train of thought. So uh, this is where uh, the normal processing would end. Right. Uh, if keep alive equals zero, then we would go into this section of code. We would kill this stuff and we would return. But since we are going to output results to a table, now we have to start a loop and we have to start looking for things. So the first thing that we do in the loop is look for sessions that match the keeper underscore human events. Um, prefix to the table. There's a method to my man. This is a reason that I wanted to set things up like that. Um, and then and just in case uh, you have any event sessions, like you restarted, I didn't want to have these uh, restart automatically if you restart the server. Um, like if you know you restart the server because something terrible happened and you don't want all this stuff going on at the same time, or just you know just whatever reason it is. Uh, so I have an, a section of code here that will look for um, the the keeper events and uh, turn them on if. Uh, we find any that are uh, inactive. So we'll turn those on. Uh, and then we create a worker table. And the worker table is to keep track of um, which tables we need to create, which uh, which tables we need to check in on, stuff like that. There are, I mean, just for the sake of not um, hitting errors in a loop, uh, I have this unique index uh, on the, on the uh, output table name uh, with the ignore dupe key on. So uh, we will silently ignore any duplicate table names because I don't want anyone trying to create duplicate tables because that will throw an error and screw up the loop. I don't want anyone to, um, I don't know, just do something goofy. But anyway, uh, we put data into th that table. We, um, we go and look at the event sessions and we insert some default values in there and we insert the uh, output database name and output schema name that you want. Uh, and then a little bit of extra conditional logic is to put, um, so one thing that I changed, I'm gonna do a video about this later, is uh, that now when we track compiles, uh, we also uh, use another event session that will um, tell you if, uh, tell you if parameterization would be possible in that. And I'll get into that in the other video, but yes, it's there. So uh, if there, if we are uh, if we are using a compile, if we're tracking compiles and we're gonna create this additional table to get parameterization information. Now, that parameterization uh, extended event is unfortunately only available in like, like newish versions of SQL Server, like 2017 and up, I think, uh, or maybe 2016 and some like service pack cumulative update combination. I'm not entirely sure. But anyway, uh, if we find tables that meet our requirement, then we go into this loop and we uh, grab the table, grab the event, uh, event type. Well, we assign values to the event type, the object name, and all this stuff. And we only do this for uh, events that don't have a table created for them. And then uh, what we do over here is um, we, if the object ID is not is null. So in other words, if the object ID that we figure out from here is uh, by putting together the database schema and table name, uh, if, if that is null, then we'll go into this and we'll uh, generate a create table statement. And uh, there, are, there is some conditional stuff in here because uh, some older versions of SQL Server don't have um, the uh, post compile event, whatever thing. And because of that, we have to use different events that don't have an, uh, the same, all the same information in them. And then uh, part of the reason why I had to do that stuff upstairs with the uh, parameterization event, inserting that data in if we find the compiles, is because uh, we only create the parameterization event if that if that extended event exists, and only if we are going to track compiles. Right now, that's not a separate thing. You can know that's not a separate entity. Uh, we execute that. We update the table to say that we are indeed, we have indeed created it. And then we go in through the loop and we go to the next ID. And if the ID is null, then we break and we go into the next thing. Fun, fun, fun. So the next thing we do is look for, um, uh, what do you call it there? 
<laughs> tables that have been created but have not been checked in the last five seconds. Uh, and then we will do just about the same looping mechanism through there. But then we get into some crazy stuff. And now I know what you're going to say. You're going to look at this dynamic sequence and you scream, Eric, this is looks awful. It's totally unformatted, blah, blah, blah. I know. It's unformatted in the store procedure. It's, un it's, it's not well formatted in the store procedure where you're going to look at it. But when you, hit the, when you use the debug parameter and you print this out, then it looks beautiful. So, or it looks pretty good. So that's where I want people looking at stuff, not, not in here at first. I'd rather use debug and just catch what's happening. So uh, we do that. And like I said, there is some conditional stuff in here. Uh, we generate the uh, insert and select statements that we need for all the different possible events. Uh, we just went by blocking. And you can kind of get the, the sense of why I chose not to do the fully formatted data going in there, because this got pretty complicated as it is. I can't imagine what it would have been like uh, trying to get all the fully formatted data into those tables. It would have been a real pain in the butt. So uh, this is what I had to, this is what I spent, I don't know, I don't know how long doing that. Um, and then we, you know, of course, shred the event data. Uh, if uh, this is where our debug part, it's probably not ever going to be that long, but just in case, uh, <laughs> decided to get pretty aggressive with that. Uh, and then we update the, um, the uh, temporary worker table to uh, reflect when we last checked for values. And if, now here's what I was super like surprised slash impressed that uh, row count produced valid information from dynamic SQL. I was like wowed by that, but we do that. So then if row count is greater than zero from the execution of the dynamic SQL, uh, then we will update that. Otherwise we'll leave it alone. Uh, and then we'll truncate out uh, the temp table that we use to store the XML data. And we do that because uh, we reuse that temp table and I don't want sh to shred more XML. <laughs> I have to, that's a terrible idea. Uh, and then here is where we do the delete for the retention. Um, and I may have made this more complicated than I needed to, but uh, this was sort of the way that it made sense in my head. So uh, we declare uh, just the time portion of uh, date time or, or of just the time portion of whatever temporal value. Uh, and only if we're in the first five minutes of the hour do we uh, enter this loop. And uh, if we, when we enter the loop, we look at this delete tracker integer. And if it's null or if it's uh, not equal to the hour of the time variable that we just uh, got going up here, uh, then we declare Oh, well, I mean, we'd probably declare this anyway, but <laughs> whatever. Um, we declare this, we select, we create our delete statement, and this will generate the delete retention doodad. And then uh, going down from here, um, we execute that. And then we set delete tracker to the hour of whenever that happened last. And we do that so that if, you know, um, we only do it once an hour. I didn't want this firing off every single time. Like, it, the hourly seemed okay to me. I don't know, maybe I'll change that down the line. Uh, and then we do some error handling at the very end of the proc here. But uh, in a nutshell, those are the those are the new additions to SP human events for logging stuff to tables. Now, I know what you're probably asking. How do we set this thing up to log to tables? And there's some argument that I should have done this first. So since this video is getting long, I'm going to do a separate video where I show you those secret commands to do that. Whew. Anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed this 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 now code review <laughs> of the new of the new uh, er of the new table logging for SP underscore human events. And I will see you in the next video where I will show you how to log to tables. And won't that be grand?